If you had a veterinarian giving you her top three tips for what to do to be proactive with your pet to give them the best health span of their life, would you take it? I know I would. And I can't wait for today's episode because I've been wanting to do this for so long, you guys. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. I have had so many incredible guests on the Pet Parenting Reset, as you well know, and the fact is that they have given us so many incredible nuggets of information that it can be hard to remember it all. Even going through a single episode, it can be, I'm going to admit, they can be kind of long sometimes, and by the time we get to the end, I may not remember (laughs) what was said at the beginning. Maybe that's just me. Maybe your brain works a thousand times better. And I uh, thank you. I'm so glad for you. Um, But I decided a while back that I wanted to go back through some of our recordings with some of the best guests in the natural, holistic, integrative pet health space and pick out the biggest nuggets, the best nuggets of information from each of the episodes and start to release these nuggets to you in bite-sized pieces that are a little more easily digestible and maybe even more actionable because of that. So today I went back to uh, I more than a year ago <laughs> with Dr. Odette Suter. She is one of my absolute favorite holistic veterinarians. If you're not familiar with her, let me tell you a little bit about her really quickly. Dr. Odette Suter graduated from veterinary school in Switzerland in 1994. Early on, she recognized the limitations of conventional medicine and questioned its role in true healing. If you are at all familiar with Dr. Suter, you know like just how absolutely adorably out of this world she is. Uh, Her unconventional upbringing combined with her own healing journey has led her to explore many avenues to discover and treat the underlying cause of disease of her animal patients. She researched many holistic and functional medicine modalities and owns Peak Animal Health Center, where she offers intensive training programs, combining holistic treatment and teaching to educate clients on creating longevity for their animals. She has some, um, what your vet never told you is the book she has written. I absolutely love it. Uh, it is, well, it was probably one of the very first, if not the first holistic pet health books I ever read. And oh my goodness, I couldn't stop talking about it when I read it. So Today, I'm going to bring back the top three things that Odette Suter, Dr. Odette Suter, gave us for preventative health in our pets. Here it is. What would be like your top three takeaways, just key ideas to put into people's minds that you want them to know, that you want them to research moving forward for their pets? Well, for one, you want to be proactive. I think that's the, the key to everything. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. If you're trying to save money on food or whatever it may be ahead of time, you're going to pay for it later. That's just the reality. So you may as well cough up the money. <laughs> that's what I say. Um, so being proactive is definitely very important. And then also you want to make sure that you actually have a bit of a strategy when it comes to your animal's health. Because uh, what I find as one of the biggest mistakes is that people try one thing at a time. And then if that doesn't work, they move to something else, move on to something else. But in order to create health, you really have to have all of the keys in place. And I call them the seven pillars of health because you have to have a systematic approach and, and, you know, include everything because 
the sum, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So nutrition is one of the pillars. Um, so you have to make sure that all the animal, you know, that the animals get the nutrients that they need so that all the cells can function properly. Because one of the biggest um, causes for disease is really poor nutrition when they don't get enough of what they need. So basically a deficiency. And the other big aspect that is causing problems health-wise is toxicity. So too much of something. And we live in a world that is very, very toxic right now, you know, with all the glyphosate and all the stuff that we spray, all the sanitizing that we're doing. I mean, yeah, we just live in a very toxic world, including obviously now we also have a lot of electromagnetic radiation that is affecting the body. Um, so basically toxicity would be the other part. Uh, so we definitely have to do all that we can to help eliminate all of the toxins that are, that we have control over, you know, obviously a lot of them we don't have control over, but we, we have a lot that we can control, you know, flea, um, flea and tick preventatives, for example, are toxins and some of them are quite dangerous for the animals actually. Um, we can also limit vaccines. You know, there's a lot of things that we can do. We can eliminate all the, you know, fluorescent colored soaps <laughs> that we have and go for natural biodegradable kinds, you know, get rid of all the smelly things, um, including scented candles as well. Uh, all of these things are, are quite toxic, making sure that the water is filtered, you know, all that um, sort of thing. So I really invite people to join the detox summit because we will talk about all of these toxins um, but in any case toxins and deficiencies in nutrients are the causes of malfunctioning of cells and that's basically what disease is it's a malfunctioning of cells and so if we are able to restore function to the cells then we can you know and that's good obviously and anyway so the, the seven pillars of health are really what help restore function to the entire body. And as I started out, nutrition is the first one. The second one is gastrointestinal health. We definitely want to make sure that the GI tract is healthy because unfortunately, nowadays, again, with all the pollution that's going on, a lot of the microbes, the good microbes that we have in our gut that are really helping us survive are being killed off because of you know, glyphosate, for example, is an antibiotic, so it kills the microbes. And without these microbes in the gut, we really don't have much of a chance of survival because they're basically running the show. They're like, you know, tens of thousands of different species of microbes, and they each have individual jobs, and they produce a lot of biochemicals that are helpful for the body to, to run. I mean, they outnumber the body by a factor of 10, depending on whether we just went number two or not. <laughs> and then on a, on a genetic level, they outnumber us by a factor of 150. So, you know, I always ask people, who's running the show here? Is it the cells or is it actually the microbes? So it's the microbes, they are running the show. So without them, we can't survive. So making sure that we replenish the microbiome and, and repair the gastrointestinal tract, that's kind of, you know, at the very bottom top, you know, part of what needs to be repaired and, and taken care of when we have issues, because that's where a lot of diseases originate, you know, including psychological issues, behavior issues, skin issues, cancer, autoimmune diseases, um, seizures, you know, all of these different types of diseases all have a connection to the um, gut biome and the gastrointestinal tract in general. So very important. Oh yeah, and then all the neurodegenerative diseases that we see, especially uh, in humans and then also in older animals um, that all have, has a gut connection. And um, these neurodegenerative diseases, they start early on in life. So with Alzheimer's, they have found that that starts like, you know, decades before symptoms actually manifest. So another reason to be really proactive Wow, was that incredible or what? And I really love, again, I have been wanting to do this for so long, how it is bite-sized and actionable. So you can now take this information that this holistic veterinarian has given you free of charge and implement it with your pets. I cannot tell you how important gut health is for, you know, having worked now, this is, 
I'm in a totally different place from where I was more than a year ago when I originally talked to Dr. Suter on the podcast. Um, and I'm getting ready to go see her. So uh, hopefully I'll get her back on the podcast again soon. But from now to then, bleh, I said that wrong, didn't I? From then to now, I have become a certified holistic pet health coach. I am this close to finishing my canine nutrition certification and I have been working with clients and I can tell you the impact of gut health is I think, you know, obviously with humans, especially in the United States, it's pretty horrible. Our, our gut health is horrible. I think it might be worse in our pets and it is seriously affecting them in so many ways. Um, you know, dogs come to me all the time. Well, pet parents with dogs come to me all the time with ridgy skin, with all kinds of uh, autoimmune and different disorders that uh, boatloads of food sensitivities and no one, their veterinarian, you know, especially these people who have only been to traditional Western veterinary offices, no one has talked to them about gut health at the very, very, like every once in a blue moon of traditional, uh, veterinarian has said, Hey, um, let's give your dog some probiotics. And, uh, that at least, I don't know, maybe is something maybe is showing that we're going in the, or the right direction. I don't know. But of course, Dr. Suter is one of the best in the gut health space in the holistic pet health world. So I really hoped you enjoyed this bite-sized nugget that is super actionable that you can go implement right away. And uh, let me know how you liked this episode because I want to start sprinkling these in. I think that this can be really beneficial for you and me both, um, uh, because we can often forget. We, we learn so many things we can often forget. So wanted to break this down into something smaller and easily manageable. If I can say that word, my goodness for you. So, uh, let me know, reach out to me on Instagram. Of course, you can go to the Pet Parenting Reset and fill out the contact form there, but uh, whatever is easiest for you. And thank you so much for spending your time with me. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it and how much I care about the impact you're making in your pet's life. With that, please have a wonderful rest of your day. Give your pets some extra love from me. Talk to you next week. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos and my online dog training the Furry Family Coach. Just go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside. Oh, 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 oh.